Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 28. I think I made a small miscalculation in the last video. I thought we will be able to start launching the rockets at the very start of this one, but we still need to finish researching the last level of structural integrity for the sphere. Without it, we won't be able to build a proper one, the areas right around the rotational poles are inaccessible without it. So, we will do some chores around the place while the last few cubes are being processed, and then we will start the construction. As I've said a couple times before, I will keep the actual design a secret. I will set up the different layers, but I will obscure the screen while pasting in the layers. Before we get started, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel, and clicking the like button will let me know that this video was worth making. If you want to help me make a living off this one day, please consider becoming a channel member, where you will get an early access to the videos as I make them, and for a one-time donation, you can find a link to my Ko-fi page in the description. But enough talking, let's get into it. This is where we left off. We still have a little over 1300 cubes left on the last level of the tech we need to be able to build a complete sphere, so we need to wait a little before we start launching. I suppose we could pass the time by setting up that long-awaited tower assembly on the mall. We've been languishing on the leftovers from the old mall, but we are starting to run out, so we should start thinking about making new ones. The last one might be a bit tricky. If you remember, it requires both advanced engines, as well as charged batteries to make. I suppose we could steal the engines from the logistic vessel production, but the batteries will need their own separate space somewhere. Other than that, it's the same exact tale we've seen before. We feed the assemblers with the stuff they need from the local bot network, and start making what we need. and we're out of bots again. For now I just set the different distributor caps to automatically accept any new bots we have in our inventory whenever they get the chance. Two down, one more to go. And the last technology is done for the sphere structural integrity. Technically, we are ready to start designing the different layers. But, I have the design saved in a text file, so I wanted to open it while I was traveling or something similar, when I don't need to pay close attention to what I was doing.
For now, let's just steal some engines from the vessels. We only need 10 of them per tower, so I think we can get away with slowing down the production rate a little bit. As for the bots, we don't have them on the mall just yet, and we don't need them so often that I wanted to bother setting them up. I just quickly picked up enough stuff to make some, and then I was off to do other things. We only need enough to start moving the engines over to the gas harvester assembly, the rest can manage with the bots from the supplier chests. The last thing we need are the batteries. We had the charger left over from the old mall, so we can repurpose that for this one. Now we need the distributor caps, and we are nearly done. The only thing missing from all this is a place that makes the actual batteries, but I think I will deal with that some other time. What I was more concerned about was the lack of blue magnets in the area. I thought we got that whole thing sorted in the last episode, and yet, we were still struggling with it. Wait a second. Zero iron? How on earth is that even possible? If there is one thing we are mining a lot of these days, it's iron. We better take a look at Vulcan, something isn't right. It's the general throughput of the logistics network. We simply cannot deliver the raw iron fast enough to keep the smelters going. Our vessels simply aren't fast enough yet. Well, there is a way to fix this but for that we need to make a visit to our mining operations. Right now, we only have a single tower moving the iron out from the mining planet. Sure, the towers taking in the iron also send out their own vessels to make the deliveries, but it is evidently not enough. If we set up a couple more towers to gather the iron, and ship it out, then we should be able to help things out quite a bit. And they are already busy gathering the ores. Once the warpers arrive, the vessels will start delivering the stuff to Vulcan. I suppose we could give these towers a slightly higher priority for deliveries by setting their cargo thresholds to 90% instead of 100. That way, they will move out before the ones on Vulcan, so the iron will make it to the smelters twice as fast, since the actual delivery is made on the first half of the trip, not the second half. I think we can let things settle into the new rhythm for now, this intervention should be enough to deal with the iron shortfall. But just for good measure, I decided to set up yet another smelting tower. It can't hurt, so why not? And we just researched a way to use graviton lenses in our ray receivers. 
We don't have any of those set up right now, but we definitely will before the episode is over. Those are the buildings that will allow us to take advantage of the power generation of the sphere. Without them, it would just be a pretty thing floating above the star, but by using the receivers, we can actually harvest the output. Just a heads up. The sphere power generation will start out rather weak. But it's the kind of thing that will keep accumulating over time, and the finished article will be enough to power the entire star system, and more. Okay, all we need now is a single tower. Let's jump back to Juno real quick. And don't worry, I didn't forget about the sphere. It's coming real soon. Well, the iron is still struggling a little, but with this third tower, things should stabilize a bit more quickly. Okay. Time to do the deed. First, let's head back to space, and park ourselves in a high orbit around Zeus. I want to see the first ones go up from Juno. Before I paste in the actual layers, let's set them up. We will start with three for now. The design I'm going for requires a very specific kind of sphere orientation for each layer. The effect wouldn't really be as effective without it. We want one to be upright, and the other two to be offset at 90 degrees. Once the designs are finished, it will be obvious why I was going with this. And if you don't mind, I will start obscuring the screen now. If you are really interested in the end result, you can find a similar blueprint on the DysonBlueprints.com site under my name. It's not the same, the details of the shape and the colors are different, but the overall idea is pretty much the same. Just search for my name in the authors, and you will find it quite easily. Sadly, the game gets really laggy when it comes to rendering spheres with dense structures and multiple layers, so I had to turn off the visibility of two out of three layers in the game world. We will only be able to see the outermost one, the other two will be hidden unfortunately. At least the iron seemed to be doing okay since the increased throughput. The magnets should be flowing freely once more. And let's take a look at the launch pads. Seeing the rockets shoot up into the sky is something that I can watch all day. Unfortunately, most of these rockets will go toward the invisible layers. Now, I do have to say, I am not opposed to turning them back on. Technically the frame rate would be somewhere between 20 and 30 FPS, so with the playback being at double speed, the end video should still be close to 60 FPS once everything's done. It's just that things would be a bit more sluggish for me personally. For the sake of visuals, I would be willing to make that sacrifice. But for this video, we will keep those two layers invisible, and I'll make the decision before the next one is out. Anyways, I wanted to visit the nodes currently under construction. Now, you might have noticed that it looks rather dark. That is because I colored the frames pitch black. That way, they stand out more against the shells. In the meantime, we managed to research the photon generation technology. Once we have those ray receivers, we can set them to two different modes. They can either siphon power from the sphere, adding their output into the planetary network directly, or they can start generating so-called critical photons. 
those will be instrumental in creating the end game technologies, so we will not really bother with doing too much direct harvesting. And since we already have a sphere under construction, we might as well start taking advantage of it. Even a single node is capable of generating power, so there is no point any of it going to waste. For now, we are only gathering enough materials to build 10 of these receivers, and we won't be placing all of those down. As I keep saying, the early days of a sphere is always a slow burn, and it will take quite a bit of time to get things up to speed. Well, it seems our silicon production is also struggling. We might have to set up a mining operation for it before the day is out. Here's the thing about these ray receivers. They need a constant view of the sphere, so the most ideal place to build them is around the polar regions. If we feed them those green graviton lenses, they should gain a bit of leeway in this regard, but to keep them at maximum efficiency, they need an uninterrupted sightline. And on normal planets, that's only possible on the poles. In the middle, we place a tower. This is where we will store the graviton lenses, which will be consumed by the receivers. Then, we start to place the dishes around it, and we try to leave as little wasted space as we can. We will place too many of them for now, but eventually we will need the poles absolutely covered with them. We also need to make sure we keep all of them well stocked with lenses. I like to run a small belt ring, broken up with splitters. Okay, the receivers now have the lenses in them. This will increase the angle where they can keep a line of sight with the sphere, as well as increase their overall efficiency. And here's another quirk of these facilities. They have a bit of a warm-up period. When they first come online, they need to spend a couple minutes getting up to speed, and as soon as they lose sight, that efficiency drops. This is why it's important to keep them on the poles. They are not like solar panels, where they start generating as soon as they get sunlight. We need them to be going at See this? As soon as I placed that power pole, the local power network went red. I think we must have launched a good two or three hundred rockets by now, if not a lot more, and yet, we cannot even charge a single logistics tower. Yeah. The early days of a sphere are always a bit of a struggle. But, the construction is underway. The more I think about it, the more I want to turn the invisible layers back on. I am willing to suffer through some bad frame rates for the sake of watching it get built. Now, we do need some extra silicon, remember? We should look for a good candidate. Lambda Leonis only have 19 million. It's a decent amount overall, but it's spread out over quite a number of planets, so setting up shop on any of them is a bit of a hassle for low returns. 
This one however, this place has 13 million on a single planet. That will do. Before we go, let's make sure we have everything. And good thing I took a look at the research. Our processor production is really in the gutter these days, mostly because of the lack of silicon. You know what, before we go to Kafal Jidma, let's double up the processor assemblies, might not be a bad idea to have it ready as soon as we can supply the silicon in greater numbers. Oh, right. I didn't set up a grading crystal mine for the logistics network yet. If we need more advanced miners, we will need to bring some home by hand. Oh well, we have about a dozen in our inventory, so we should be okay for a small mining outpost. Well, you know what's coming. We are setting up a mining operation, so it's time to kick the fast forwarding into high gear. This one was a bit lengthy, so the overall episode is shorter than usual. I hope you understand. Well, as luck would have it, we have everything, except the fusion reactors. As much as I tried to think my way out of this, we simply cannot get around it. We have to go home to make some. Just for good measure, I also set up extra delivery towers, so we can ensure that we have enough throughput on the ores. Especially important, since this system is much farther away from Olympus than Lambda Leonis. That about does it, and we have some miners left over too. Not too bad. Next stop, Vulcan. We need to make sure the silicon smelting is going as good as it can. The throughput is definitely better but I think we would be better off with a second smelting array.
Nice. It's already working. We still have the silicon mines on Minerva, so we could use that to pick up some extra ores, just to kickstart the place. As I looked at the sphere, it seems the vast majority of the rockets end up in the invisible layers. It is decided then. From the next episode forward, those layers will be kept on, even if the framerate suffers as a result. Anyways, before we say goodnight, I wanted to do one last thing. Right now, the ray receivers are set to harvest energy directly. I think it would be best if we set them to generate photons instead. First, let's make sure they have a place to dump those photons. We will belt them back into the central tower, and we will ship them out to be processed somewhere else. After that, we can set them to photon generation mode. They will stop contributing to the planetary power network, but it is for a very good reason. These photons will be the foundations for the end game. This also increases the amount of power requested from the sphere quite a lot, so we won't have to worry about building any more of these receivers for a good while. Anyways, this is it for today. I failed to consider the mining operation for the record timer, and this one came out a bit shorter than usual. I can only apologize for that, and I hope to do better in the future. As for the next episode, I think we will get going with the exodus of our production facilities to other planets. We will likely start with the chemical side of things. Our current graphene and nanotube towers are pretty boxed in, and they are still using the old chemical labs, so upgrading those, and moving them off-world will do us some good in the long run I think. I also wouldn't mind setting up a processor factory somewhere. Either way, we just need some shield generators, and we should be good to start expanding. Now it's just a matter of increasing the rocket production to build the sphere faster. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel, and clicking the like button will also help letting me know that the video was worth making. If you would like to help me make a living off this one day, please consider becoming a channel member, where you will get an early access to the videos as I make them, and if you want to give a one-time donation, you can find a link to my Ko-fi page in the description. Thank you for your support, and I will see you in the next one.